Talking about navigation, first of all, there's three general forms of navigation in terms of piloting. The first one is pilotage, okay, or pilotage. Pilotage is the oldest form of navigation. Now, don't laugh. It literally is just looking out the window and seeing where in the world you are. It uses things like landmarks, lakes, prominent cities, highways, mountain peaks, uh, things that are kind of easy to spot, and then really comparing those to a chart, what we call a sectional chart, and uh, getting a, a read on where you are. Secondly, dead reckoning. And that's an old term, but it basically means a series of computations on heading, uh, distance, time, and fuel. It's a really a running a numbers game here. And that's what we're going to kind of focus on first in this session. And then we're going to end the session with radio navigation, a third form of navigating. No matter what kind of plotter you have, what you're going to do is you're going to reference, as I said before, your course heading to north or true north. That is the North Pole of the Earth. Okay. Now, how we can do that is on the charts that we call sectionals, there are these lines of longitude. And we can line up with any one of those lines of longitude. They all lead to the North Pole. Okay. The meridian is the zero degree line, but all these are lines of longitude. It really doesn't matter where we are on the Earth, 15 or 30 or 45 degrees. But what our goal is, and they appear to be bending here, right? But the, of course, the Earth is curved. So if we look at any one of these lines straight on, it'll appear as this zero line here, nice and straight from the North Pole to the South Pole. And so this will provide, and they're drawn on the chart, a line of reference for us to find out our heading. Let's say, for example, that we're looking at a sectional. So right now, it's just kind of a cleaned up version so that we can, we can just learn the concept here. And let's say that we have found on our chart, on our sectional chart, a line of longitude, which again is a straight line extending from the North Pole down to the South Pole. And let's say that that is this line that we see here. Now, let's also say that our intention is to fly from Airport A down to Airport B. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to line up. In this case, we're looking at a fixed card plotter. And many of you probably have this plotter. This one, particular one is put out by the company ASA, which has the little wings on it right there. And what we're doing is we're just getting our plotter edge, our straight edge, right along that course line, as you can see. Okay. The goal is twofold, to get the, the straight edge of the plotter on our course line, as you see here. But secondly, to position the plotter back and forth along that line so as to also intercept one of these lines of longitude to go right through that center hole. So your goal is to put both the course line and the line of longitude through that center hole. Both of them intersect right there. And really, if you got that part, you're home free. Because the rest of it is simply looking up here where your line of longitude is running through the azimuth card and read the heading. So I take my true course plus or minus my wind correction angle and that yields the true heading. You can look at that formula again as to how that works or on the E6B that you have should probably have that formula as well. Now my true heading is still 87 because 87 and 0 is 87. Uh, my magnetic variance is down here, minus 1. That would be the isogonic variance or the isogonic line. This particular case, this person's very flying very close to the agonic line, aren't they, where there is no difference because it's a minus 1, which would mean it's 1 degree east. We at least know which side they're on. East is least, so we subtract that. So again, the summation of that 87 minus 1 yields 86 and that's called our magnetic heading. So again, the top box here is the MH, the magnetic heading. If you have your E6B, go ahead and take it out here. And let's go ahead and uh, figure out some calculations. Before we do that, let's talk a little bit, let's kind of orient you a little bit with the E6B. There's a front side and a back side. The front side looks like this. In this case, it's a, put out by Glime. It's a Glime flight computer. For these calculations, what we need to understand is there's some rings around the instrument with numbers, right? You got an outer ring 
you've got a middle ring and you've got the inner ring. For all practical purposes, what you want to really remember, keep this in mind, the middle and inner rings are always time. The distance between the arcs, uh, you get a number, a big number, for every 10 knots. So we can see here 160, 170, 180, here's 150, 140. The distance between there is always 10 knots. So that means that it really doesn't matter where you mark the 20 up from. You're going to want to mark up from the center 20 uh, above that. Never down, but always up. So to kind of make it a little easier, what we can do is just center, put our center hole lined up with the, uh, with the 100. And we'll call that, you know, 100 knots. Notice there is no, you can't get down to zero. So we'll just start at 100 to kind of make it a little easier. And we're going to measure up 20 for the 20 knots. So there's 10 right there, and there's 20. And it says actually 120, so that's kind of nice. So we'll go ahead and we're going to click in a little dot. Now you can see mine as a red dot, but yours will be a little pencil uh, scribble. Uh, so make it nice and big so you can really see it and don't lose it. Uh, make that dot with your pencil right there. Again, all we did was set in 330 under the index, and then we measured up from the center hole 20 knots, made a little pencil dot. All right, so if you're following that, you're in good shape. Next step is that represents the wind. Now let's represent the direction we're flying. We're representing that with the true course. So 15 degrees is our true course. So we're going to set 15 degrees underneath the true index here. So that means I'm going to slide my azimuth around till I get 15 right under the true index. Okay. So you should see 15. There's 10. There's 20. That's 15 underneath the true index. Go ahead and do that yourself. Now, this is kind of a two-for-one special. It's called an HSI. That stands for a Horizontal Situation Indicator. Horizontal Situation Indicator. We've got our traditional heading indicator, okay, in a digital format, but that's our heading indicator. So if I turn the airplane, this heading is going to, this thing's going to rotate, and it's going to give me a new digital readout up here. That's our, that's our heading we're currently on, 342. But also, I have this green arrow here that represents the VOR. So the VOR is kind of in the middle of the whole heading instrument. And with an HSI, and the button's not shown here, by the way, the knob for moving it, we have an OBS as well, an Omni Bearing Selector, a Core Selector. And I can rotate that Core Selector, and this whole assembly, uh, not this line here, let's, I'm not talking about that yet at this point, but this green line here, this whole thing will rotate around. So the heading head of that needle will just simply move around 360 degrees to any course you select. And in the G1000, it also shows it here as a course, and it's in green as well. Uh, up here in the upper right, this is a sort of traditional HSI. So I put that up there uh, in analog HSI as opposed to the digital one on the G1000. But it's the same really uh, thing. But notice here that we have you know a heading. We're on a, looks like a 175 degree heading, and we are heading towards getting back to this line, because notice the break in the arrow, that's your CDI, your course deviation indicator, is to the left of the whole arrow. So that means the airplane needs to be turned to the left to intercept it and get back on. It's just like when you're getting on the freeway. The freeway's right here, but the on-ramp is at a little angle, isn't it? It's at a little bit of an intercept as you merge onto the freeway and get into the lane you want. That's what we're doing. We're just merging in the freeway, and you can even see it pictorial here. You've got the freeway here, that's what this is representing, and you've got your airplane here, and you can see it's heading towards that line. But what's going to happen is that line is eventually going to move this way and get underneath the airplane, centered up between the airplane and the rest of the arrow. Once it does, you're on the freeway, you're on the lane, but now what you need to do to track it is you need to turn back to the heading of wherever this arrow is. That is your radial you've selected there. And when you turn the airplane back to that, it's like you're lining up in the lane. Otherwise, you just go cutting across all those lanes on that on-ramp. So what you got to do is once you get into the lane and you get on, find yourself on the freeway, you got to turn slightly 
usually to the right, to stay in the lane and parallel the lane and parallel the freeway. And that's what you're doing in tracking. You're just intercepting a, a course, a radial. Once the radial is intercepted, that is the needle is centered. You need to turn back to that heading of the radial that you're on and remember that you need to do that. 